All right, so ghosting. Nobody actually likes being ghosted, whether it's in real life or in business, in relationships or in actual business transactions. When one party stops communicating with another, that is effectively ghosting. You can call it whatever you want, but it's ghosting. It's not returning emails, not returning calls, text messages, and it kind of sucks. So here are three specific things that you can do to deal with ghosting professionally. All right, so the number one thing you can do is follow up. Now, I know you already knew that, but here's how to follow up properly in situations where you are getting ghosted. So let's say you have a client on the line and you've signed an agreement, or maybe you haven't signed an agreement, and that's what the entire communication you're getting ghosted. So you've called, you've emailed, you've you know tried to go through their secretary, you've tried to go through everyone that you can possibly, and it's just not working. Well, here's the deal. You need to follow up on a certain cadence to different people. So let's tackle number one first, right? The follow-up needs to be on a certain level, right? It needs to be, let's just say every three days, that would be a safe zone, right? Every day, way too much. Every three days, not so much. It's okay. It's reasonable. Every three days, they're kind of going to forget about it. They're kind of going to bring it back top of mind every three days. The second piece I want to tackle is your mode of communication. How are you actually reaching out to these people? If it's been email the entire time, change it up to text message, right? In that email signature, there's likely going to be a mobile number or you could probably find the mobile number somewhere else. Maybe it was when you originally had the call, the first call with like a hiring manager or somebody, and you have that mobile number. Well, send it a text message because here's what happens. Half the time, people that I talk to in business start responding and communicating with me way better, way more frequently if I'm texting them rather than emailing them. They're human just like us, right? And they use whatever communication mode is easiest. And oftentimes that's simply text messaging. Look, if it's not gonna be a text message, then it's gonna be email, back to email. If it's not gonna be email, then it's gonna be a phone call, right? Some people don't even check their text messages or their email and they just need to be called right? They need to see a number pop up on their phone and answer it. That's how they do business. Maybe they're, you know, old school, right? Because I know a lot of us in 2023, we don't answer calls. We, we see a number and we get scared to death, but these people pick up the phone and they'll answer and say, hello. And, you know, take a conversation from there. So change the pattern, right? These are some things that you can do to actually get the follow-up flowing. All right. So the second thing that you can do to actually follow up professionally and stop ghosting from happening professionally is to be persistent, but not pushy. There is a difference. All right, guys, so persistence is the continuation of what you're doing. Pushy is just taking your persistence and pushing the line, going way over the line and doing that cadence of every single day, a text message, an email, a call, and, and every single day you're sending a, a more aggressive message and things like that. That is pushy. That's going to push somebody away. That's why they call it pushy, right? But persistence shows that you're willing to go the distance, right? You're not willing to give up, right? So persistence is gonna show that you actually mean business, that you're serious. So to avoid getting ghosting and to handle ghosting professionally, be persistent, but not pushy, right? Pushy, again, gonna cross over the line and gonna get them totally off of uh, your situation, totally off of the communication. Persistence shows them that you're serious and persistence will eventually lead to two outcomes. One, they're actually gonna get back to you and everything will become normal. The second outcome is they're gonna get back to you and they're just gonna tell you, hey, sorry, I was, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever excuse, but we don't wanna move forward. So they'll give you an answer, right? If you are persistent enough. People come out of their shell when you are that persistent. All right, so number three, and I always have to throw this one in there because it's really, really important. Understand if being ghosted is valid. Like, is it valid that you're being ghosted? Did you not provide enough 
information up front to somebody in business? Did you not provide enough clarity, right? Was your value proposition not enough? Were you just not worthy of getting a response? That could be the case. In many scenarios, you could talk to somebody in business and they just don't get back to you because they're like, well, that's just not worth my time, right? And oftentimes that's business. So expect that to happen. Like expect that that could be a reasonable scenario, right? Just think in your mind for a second, why am I being ghosted? Like, why is this happening? And when you understand, it could be for this reason, it could be for that reason, and be self-aware, then you're actually gonna understand, hey, I'm probably being ghosted because of this. And that's probably why. Now you can be a little bit more persistent still, but then you can kind of fade it off and understand, well, I'll get him the next time, right? Look, this is an experience that you can learn from, right? Ghosting is not the end of the world, okay? That's that's for sure. So it doesn't mean like you get rejected and oh my God, like I'm out of business, I can't do business anymore. No, that's not the case. Go on and move on to somebody else, right? But learn from this ghosting experience, right? Learn the lessons of what you may have done right and definitely what you may have been able to improve upon, right? What are some things that you did in the scenario, in your messaging, in your messaging and how often you messaged and the way you messaged and all of those things, learn from those things, right? And understand, well, that probably wasn't the best or that was pretty good, I'll keep doing that, but let me ease up on this. Learn from the experience, take those lessons forward and you will be much, much better equipped when you do get ghosted the next time, because I guarantee it'll happen again. Hey guys, so much of what I'm talking about, about being ghosted often happens in the recruiting business, which is the first business I ever actually started. I have a free Facebook group on recruiting, link in description of this video. If you wanna join Recruiter Empire, We'd love to have you in there. There's 16,000 recruiters in the group. And with that, I hope you got value out of this video. If so, please smash that like button and I'll see you guys next time.